That's what I walked into. <laughs> yeah. I was very what confused. I'm, what I'm wondering is why you... How long have you two worked here? This is my 27th summer at camp, and I believe it is your 25th summer at camp. What keeps you two coming back every year? Partially, our, our family has grown up here, so this is all our family knows. You know, our kids have never really been away for the summer, not at camp. Part of it probably is that the rest of the staff are really an extended part of our family, and we come back to be with them every year and get to see all the kids that come and learn and grow and become better people while they're here. Kenny gets yellow. I don't even know what my grandma would say. I was just a lowly den leader when I first started attending here. Yeah, definitely the family component because we've been here so long that even like leaders we see year after year and when they have more kids we get to meet their new kids and it's just been the second home. I think when I first started here I kept coming back because I really wanted to help and scouting did so much for me that I really wanted to give back to the people that were coming up and the younger scouts. What are some of your favorite memories from camp here? I know where to start. <laughs> well, I think it was pretty exciting the year uh, Riker was born. Uh, my son was due in July and ended up being a, a planned C-section, so uh, you know, we knew he was coming and made a big plan and then uh, Monday morning left camp, had a baby. Um, Wednesday was National Inspection Day or Visitation Day and uh, I came back for a little bit to, to make sure we got our accreditation. And then the next day, uh, Riker, my son, came. First year in camp, four days old. <laughs> Now you shoot. It's on the red side. Yep, that's where it's supposed to be. That means you can shoot. In the beginning days of, you know, knowing that we need to pay out this money for the bankruptcy, um, there wasn't really a lot of thought that it was going to be that terrible lot for us. Um, the possible amounts grew. And then uh, they started to have meetings, and uh, honestly, I thought it was not going to go this way. And I went to the meetings, you know, when I could, and argued the case for keeping this property because I think it was important. And I think the most vital part to me is to make sure that we have a Cub Scout resident camp because I think. Any organization and any part of the country, it's always, you know, the littlest ones among us are the most important. Um, we got to take care of, you know, everyone, you know, from the from the youngest to the oldest. Uh, but if we don't spend a lot of time and effort training the youngest among us, then, you know, one day everything that's around won't, won't be taken care they of. They won't and value it. They won't value, you know, the camps. They won't value other people, you know. You got to train up kids in the way that they should be. So the most vital part going forward for us was keeping a Cub Scout resident camp. Uh, we had to make sure that no matter what, there was Cub Scout camping opportunities and ways to bring new people into the program and ways to make sure that that program was still really important and vital and life-changing for them. Uh, it did so much for all of us and it did so much for you know, all the kids that grew up here and, you know, became staff and ran programs for other kids, uh, that we want to make sure that it continued. Um, obviously, I'd love to keep it here because this is where I, you know, I feel like I grew up. But the most important part was to make sure that we had, you know, programs that continued and 
that it was it was a thing for the future. Yeah. Okay. So, if you ever become lost um, in uh, in the forest or in the woods or wherever it might be, and end up having to uh, survive on your own skill, um, there's the first thing you should do is think stop. Stop is an acronym. S T O P. I think the most important thing to remember is, well, this is really rough, even this place, if that's what happens. Sure. What was that? It used to be like 10 staff here or less. I jump like this has grown. This has grown dramatically. And and we can do that elsewhere if that's what needs to be done. If this can be recreated elsewhere, it'll be a different version of it. But while this spot is beautiful, there's beautiful spots at Mincy too. Mine too. I'll, I'll tell you this: the nicest, the nicest facilities in the country don't make a camp. Okay. It's the people. Yeah. Lots, lots of people come from all over and visit us and say, "Oh, we want to have a big Cub Scout resident camp in our council, and it's never really gotten off the ground." Mm -hmm. You know, we want to see what you guys have. What makes the difference? And 100%, the first answer I was given is the staff. It's the people here. It's growing these people from start to finish into the people that they are now and you know making sure that they help grow the next group of people Yeah, the physical part, the physical part of camp isn't isn't the most important. So we get attached to that, but uh, but the staff is the most important part of any camp, hundred percent. And uh, you can you can train new staff, uh, but it takes years for the staff to become who they are for us. Um, you, you can't you can't take a bunch of people and one summer turn them into the most amazing staff in the world. Starts when they're little. <laughs>